to the Create Your Empowered Self podcast. This how-to podcast is focused on empowering you to live your best life by incorporating the principles of the Law of Attraction, NLP, meditation, and other spiritual teachings. I'm Jeannie Hall, a certified NLP practitioner and creative empowerment coach. Let's get you empowered. Hello and welcome to the Create Your Empowered Self podcast. This is episode 33, Great Expectations. Now, while I love the novel Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, that awesome literary classic is actually not what I'm referring to, at least not today. What I'm talking about is having great expectations for yourself. And what that means is it's about believing in your own ability to create your own blissful future for yourself. And the reason I'm talking about this today is it's all about how the law of attraction mirrors our own thoughts and our own emotions back to us because the law of attraction is constantly working at all times in your life. And it's creating your reality based on what you're thinking and feeling right now. That is what you're going to receive more of. So these two concepts of having great expectations and working with the law of attraction and it mirroring your thoughts and feelings back to you are very tightly interwoven. Because when we have an expectation, it prepares us for our future. And if we want to create something better for ourselves, whether it's something material like a new house, or whether it's something a little deeper and more conceptual like a deeper sense of fulfillment and greater meaning in our lives, holding certain expectations in our minds can be very helpful to bring that to be. And believing you can have those things, that house or that sense of deeper meaning is also part of your expectations. Many of us go through our lives lowering our expectations because we've been disappointed by how things have gone in our past. Maybe we had our hopes up really high about something and our hopes were dashed and we were horribly disappointed and even hurt. But Just because something like that happened in your past, even if it happened more than once, doesn't mean that it will happen in your future. And constantly focusing on either mistakes we made in our past or how someone else treated us in our past or how something we tried failed in our past, that just perpetuates this endless cycle of negativity. And it also perpetuates your fear. It makes you doubt your own talent and ability and creativity. And trust me, you were born with all sorts of creativity, all sorts of unique gifts that are special just to you. You were born with talents and a greater purpose. And you have the ability to turn your life into anything you want. I don't care what's in your past. So this endless cycle of negativity that might be growing in your life right now, it may be causing you to settle for less than what you want. And it may be leaving you feeling really miserable and really negative about your life in general. If you've settled for a significant other, a partner, a spouse, if you've settled for a certain kind of job or a specific kind of job, if you've settled for a certain kind of place to live, a certain home, apartment, flat, whatever, or anything else that you feel like you're settling, you feel like you're "Eh, good enough, I mean, I don't hate it, and you go ahead and go forward with that, then that is a really important aspect of your life. And if you're not fully satisfied with it, it will come back to bite you in the ass. It will come back to make you feel like 
at least eventually, that you could have had more. And now you're looking back and you're disappointed. So that's why it's so important to keep your expectations and your standards high. It's not about being too picky. It's not about keeping things out of your reach all the time. It's about deciding that you are worthy of that higher thing, that you deserve to have a significant other that adores you, adores you. You deserve to have that job that you want to jump out of bed in the morning and go do it, whether it's at a different place than your home or whether it's in home and you're running your own business or whatever it is, something that lights you up and makes you feel wonderful. That is what you should have for your professional life. You should have a home that you feel absolutely yourself in. You feel comfortable in, you feel safe, you feel good about it, about where you live. And all of those really big parts of your life, those are things that you don't want to settle for. You don't want to settle for less whenever you can expect more. And granted, I'm not saying that, you know, you're getting along just fine with someone, but you're wondering and, and about someone else, or maybe you're, you're pretty happy with someone right now. But maybe you maybe need to work on your communication and make it better. Maybe you're not settling for someone. Maybe you just need to work on your relationship. Or maybe you can fix up your home and (laughs) make that more of what you want. Sometimes it's not about changing it. Sometimes you can make the current job you're in much more satisfying and you can find great joy and meaning and fulfillment in it if you work to change the way you're looking at it or if you change some aspect about it. So it's not necessarily about shucking the whole thing out the window. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, though, is if you are unsatisfied with some part of your life, and especially if it comes to a point where you feel like it's crushing crushing your soul, (laughs) if it's turning into that, that is when you want to really look at your life and make a decision and start expecting greater things out of your life and looking for them. And Abraham in particular, Abraham Hicks, teaches that we deserve all good things in our lives simply because we exist. We came out of this non-physical, spiritual realm that we exist eternally in and decided to come into human bodies because we wanted to expand and to grow. We wanted to, as Abraham puts it, expand all that is with our own knowledge and experience. And that experience is called life. And it's all of these wonderful complexities. And it's also full of what Abraham calls contrast, which is maybe a little bit more of the negative side of things. Sometimes it can be very negative. And If you look at that and you realize that that is there to show you what you really want out of life and that you can then go after it, it's not there. Bad things don't happen to you because you've been bad and you're being punished. That's just not true. What is happening is that you have preferences that you were born with. And going after those preferences is part of expanding yourself and the world. And so when you decide what it is that you enjoy, and you go after it, you're only going to find more and more and more of it. More and more good is going to flow to you. You're going to find things that excite you and challenge you. And they might scare you a little bit, but deep down, you know, that's what you want. That is the kind of life that we were destined to live. And you don't have to, you can choose to go the other path and just stay where you are. You can choose to let fear and doubt control your life. You totally can. Or you can choose to be a little bit braver and stick a toe into the water. You don't have to dive in, but maybe sticking that toe into the water shows you, oh God, that's so much better, right? Oh, I like that so much better. And all you have to do is start with that little change, that baby step, like I said, and 
podcast 30, I believe. So we discover our own preferences and choose how we want to live our lives because that is how we grow. And it's also how we determine what makes us happy and what makes us fulfilled. And we get to choose that for ourselves. Free will is always, always active in our lives. And if we learn to follow our bliss and feel as good as possible, as often as possible, we will find that happiness and that fulfillment that we're after. And if you're doing something that makes you not only just meh about life, but especially if it makes you miserable, just, ugh. If you just feel awful about it for whatever reason, sometimes something temporary happens and you're stuck with something that you don't enjoy for a little bit and that happens. Sometimes you get sick. Sometimes you get injured. Things happen that aren't your fault. Absolutely. If you continue to brood about those things, you continue to think about, oh, my parents shouldn't have done this to me when I was growing up. Oh, this happened and my boss shouldn't have said that about me at work. Or, oh, this, my friend broke my heart or my boyfriend broke my heart or my girlfriend broke my heart. And you just keep letting that spin in your mind and you keep feeling the same way you felt when it first happened. And that is the vibe that you're keeping alive. That's the emotion that you're feeling all the time. That is wallowing. That is self-pity. And that is a choice. And if you continue to perpetuate that kind of negative choice, you're going to bring more of it into your life. That is the law of attraction. That is exactly how it works. And we all have that free will, like I said. And Abraham even says it this way. We're so free that some of us choose bondage. Some of us choose to stay in a relationship where we don't actually love the other person. Because, well, you know, they're bringing in paychecks and I'm comfortable. You know, I, bills are paid, so I'm going to stay because I don't have to worry about bills because I'm with this person. I don't really love them. I don't feel any passion for them at all. They disappoint me sometimes, but hey, you know, it's better than being alone and broke. How many of us have made that decision? How many of us have stayed in that yucky job that we really don't enjoy? Maybe we don't hate it. Maybe we do. But maybe we stay there because that paycheck, man, it's tiny, but you know, it's there every week or every two weeks or every month or whenever the paycheck comes. You know, I know it's going to be there in my bank account, directly deposited. It's just a comfort to know that. So even though I have to drag my ass out of bed to go to that job that I really don't like, I need that paycheck, man. And granted, I could take a risk and do something I actually like a lot better or even love. And actually feel a lot of joy and fulfillment in my life. But that won't have that paycheck, you know. So I think I'll just stay where I am. Now that one I can speak to on a personal level. Because I have stayed in some kind of work for an employer environment since I was 17 years old. Because of that very reason. Because of that paycheck. And I like some jobs more than others. I like some co-workers and became friends with them and had positive change in my life because of that. I don't think anything is accidental. I don't think there are any coincidences in this world. And I am blessed by every good person I've ever met in those jobs and every bit of learning that I gained in those jobs. But if you are miserable if you feel like your soul is being crushed by this situation, then it's time to look at things and really, really be honest with yourself and how you feel. Because if you're feeling stagnant and you're feeling miserable, then you're perpetuating more of that in your future. And if you don't want that for your future, this is the time to change it. So the safer path might feel easier, but at a certain point in your life, you'll realize it's really not. 
And I understand it feels scary. It feels risky. It may even feel foolhardy. People might tell you, you're nuts to leave your job. Why are you leaving your steady paycheck? What are you going to do when the bills come due? What are you going to do for rent and mortgage and car payments and electric bills? Right? They'll ask you. And a lot of people, that will keep them exactly where they are. Because it's too terrifying not to have that. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have a backup plan. I'm not saying you shouldn't have goals that you're setting out to reach. That you shouldn't have an absolute contingency plan so that you know what you're going to do. If you're going to quit that job, you need to have something else in place ready to go. And you better better be ready to work it. Absolutely. Or maybe it's a different job. Whatever it is, that's, you can make it work. So I'm not saying just jump blindly and then have panic attacks for a month until you get some, then then you go back to the job force and find something else because it's just too freaky. (laughs) It's too scary. I've been there too. But you can trust yourself. You can trust the universe to take care of you, to go forward and do what you love, whatever that is. And it's called great expectations. It's having great expectations of yourself. It's called having great expectations for your future. And it's having trust in the universe, in that higher power to watch over and protect and love you and for you to know all is well. We came here not only to learn and to grow but to experience joy, to experience fun. Life, we take life so damn seriously. We freak out about it and we panic about it and we have ulcers over it and we bite our nails to the nub over it and we smoke cigarettes over it and we drink ourselves into oblivion and eat ourselves into obesity over it. Whatever you're bad habit of choice might be. But we were actually meant to come here and have a good time. (laughs) That's what being here is all about. And those who are truly happy in this life, the ones with the amazing romantic relationships, they're with their soulmate and you can see it in their eyes and their faces when they look at each other. Oh my God, they were so meant to be. Look at that. I want that. Right? They have beautiful families. They have, they do what they love for a living. They not only have nice material things, but they also tend to have lives that create a positive difference in the world at the same time. So not only are they wealthy, not only are they in love, not only do they have family and friends surrounding them, not only do they have all those things and material things to go with it, they also have the fulfillment of making a positive difference in the world. Those folks are the ones who began expecting great things to happen to them. At some point in their past, they began looking at their present and being happy where they were. And they also started having really great expectations for their future. They started seeing it happen to them. They focused on those great happy things coming to them and they just believed it with all their heart. They imagined what that fantastic future would look like, sound like, smell like, taste like. They imagined how it would feel to live that life. And they imagined it so clearly that it didn't become a question. It became a reality in their minds and ultimately in their lives. They visualized that future so completely and felt the good feelings ahead of time so well that the law of attraction brought it straight to them. Because this is how our lives work if you want it to. Think about it. You know this deep down. You know this is true. Because if you wake up worrying that your spouse is going to be bitchy and your kids are going to catch that damn flu that's been going around and traffic's going to suck and your workday is going to be one headache after another, guess what kind of day you're going to have today? 
right? Just guess what those expectations are going to bring you. It's probably a bunch of that shitty crap you'd rather avoid, frankly. And sometimes it may even bring you exactly what you were worried about. And you'll just reconfirm it to yourself when it happens. When you hit traffic, you'll be like, oh, shit. I knew this was going to happen. How many people do you know that are like that? They will create that negative thing in their life before it ever happens. And then when it does happen, they'll say, see, I knew it. See, I knew this wasn't going to work. I knew it was going to go straight to hell. I knew it. How many people do we know like that? They're always crabby. They're always miserable. They're always bitchy because they're creating this negative life for themselves day by day by day. And then when it happens, it's almost like it gives them a a small thrill. It's like, see, I told you. I told you it was going to go to shit. I told you. I don't know. There's, they get something out of that. They enjoy being right more than they enjoy being happy. And the thing about it is you can be right and happy by looking at the positive side, seeing traffic flowing easily, seeing your kids staying healthy when every other kid's got the flu or the measles or whatever. Now it's not the measles so much today, but whatever it is that's coming along, a cold, Your thoughts and your feelings create your reality. So why not create a good reality? Why stay in that negativity when you don't have to? Because the more you focus on your worries and doubts and fears, the stronger they become. And the more often they're going to be attracted to you. You're going to have a life that turns into fear and doubt and worry. But you can change that. All those successful people I mentioned before, the ones that have all the love and the wealth and the fulfillment, they are not waking up daily with a sense of dread like that other group I was talking about. They are expecting things to go their way every single day when they wake up because they've developed a healthy belief system that everything always works out for them. And if you talk to them, they will say that. Oh, you know, I don't know. Things just always work out for me. And they'll just, you know, it's like, well, how did you get that book published? (laughs) You know, it's amazing. It's a great story. And and things just always end up working out for me. Wow, you had that horrible, abusive relationship in your past. And now you're happily married. And you guys are making googly eyes at each other right now. How did you find that love? How did you do that? Things just always work out for us. You know, it's amazing. That's what they believe at the core of their heart (laughs) is that things do work out for them. They change that belief to shit happens to great stuff happens to me. That is what they did. And they really do believe that. And they've repeated it to themselves enough that it became their truth. They've decided to focus on a more positive, happy future. And then it came right to them. And so as long as they continue, oh, things always work out for me. I am just so fortunate. I am so blessed. I have so much to be grateful for. I am just oh, living the best life ever. And guess what? They are. They are living the best life ever because the law of attraction brings it to them consistently because that's what they're thinking about is how great things are and how more great things are coming to them. And that can happen for you too. Because when you set out to have great expectations, you'll see more and more and more of those great expectations in your own life. And what this is called is momentum. The more positivity that you notice in your day-to-day life and focus on, the more will start coming to you. And at first, if you've never done this before and you've kind of had kind of a crappy, the shitty crappy life a little bit before, up till now, it might start out small. Maybe it'll be, you know, you wake up saying to yourself, this is going to be a great day. And good things just happened for me. I'm so grateful good things happened to me. And you just get into the habit. Good things always happen for me. Things always work out for me. You know, this might have happened before, but I know it's going to work out for me. I know everything's going to be great. 
And so then maybe your spouse wakes up in a good mood and surprises you with breakfast that morning. And maybe your kids stay healthy, even though everybody else has got the sniffles or an upset stomach. Maybe traffic just flows like a dream and you end up with so much extra time when you get to work that you actually get a chance to go buy Starbucks beforehand. Maybe your day flows so easily and flies by that it's over before you know it and you're already going home. Maybe you start to smile more and you start discovering more reasons to smile as you go along. And one of those big takeaways from changing your life and having great expectations is giving more than you receive. And a lot of people kind of balk at that and say, I don't have it to give, okay? I'm broke. I don't have anything to give. I understand that. I do. On a financial level, that can be tough. But it doesn't cost anything to give away a smile. It doesn't cost anything to hold the door for someone. It doesn't cost anything to say something kind to someone else. That doesn't cost you a freaking dime. So do that. Start giving. Even if it's not money, it doesn't have to be money. Give away kindness. Give away patience on the road. Let someone in who's trying to get in. Let them in front of you. Right? Help someone that needs help. Be kind to someone. Say something nice. That's giving too. So when you discover that having appreciation and sending out those kind thoughts and kind and you're, you're behaving in a kind way and you start noticing more and more good things to appreciate and more and more things, more and more people to be kind to and more and more kindness starts coming back toward you and you start to feel better and better, that's momentum again. And so it'll probably start small, but it'll have you'll start to see results. You'll start to see things changing. You'll start to feel better about your life in general. And maybe doors that you once considered closed reopen. Or maybe new doors that you never even noticed before suddenly pop open right in front of you. Kablamo, right? There you go. Oh, well, that's awesome. Thanks so much, right? (laughs) This is your power. And we all have the same power. When you begin to expect joy and beauty to enter your life more, they will. Because when you're looking for rainbows instead of thunderclouds, and you're looking up into that dark sky and finding stars, and you start to see everything working out for you, working for your own best interest, and you're sending love and kindness out with everything you do, you'll just notice a great, a much greater sense of patience, a much greater sense of peace at your, at your core. Because you made the choice to change your perspective and to start looking for those positive things in your life and to grow them and to increase them. And because you are deserving and worthy of such a life, you'll get it just because you changed your focus, just because you had great expectations. So thanks so much for listening. If this helped you and this resonated with you, I do have new coaching sessions available and please go and check out my the link on my coaching page. You can schedule a free 30 minute mini session with me, see if we're a good fit And I would love to work one-on-one with you and help you to make that positive change that you want to make in your life. And as always, have an empowered day, week, month, and year. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Create Your Empowered Self podcast. If you've enjoyed this content or found it helpful, please let me know by leaving a review. I upload podcasts every Wednesday and Saturday, so subscribe to receive these regular updates. 
now, go out there and live a more empowered life.